evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. This evening my guest is Mary Ortiz who's going to talk to us about storytelling. She's got some tips and does a lot of um, training for some of our daycare providers on how to make story times really interesting. Hi, Mary. Hi, Patricia. How are you? Good. Good. Great to get you out from behind the puppet stage. There you go. That's right. In the story time room and uh -huh. see, see you out and out and about with That's adults. Right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> but the kids love you and love what you do. Yes. And it's really wonderful that you're able to share this with parents, daycare providers, grandparents, whoever wants to make story time more fun. Great. I love so. doing it. I love doing it. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a, a picture here yes. of... Um, a collection of interesting books. Right. The, basically what I want to talk to you about is a little bit about the resources, some of the resources that you can use to make story time more exciting. Okay. Um, this picture incorporates some of the books that I've used before that are a lot of fun. Um, the first one is called uh, The Three Billy Goats Gruff and actually that kind of illustrates how people can use different voices. A lot of times uh. people will read a story and just use their voice. Yeah. But to use different character voices is a great thing to do. You have the three billy goats. You have the big billy goat, the mama billy goat, and the little baby billy goat. You know, you can use different voices to illustrate stuff. Yeah. Um, the second book that you see there is Rosie and the Rustlers. And Rosie is uh, about a Western story uh, about uh, Rosie and a group of wrestlers that try to get all these bad guys out of their town. Um, so you can, there again, you can read it normal, but incorporate a southern accent. Yeah. A little bit of the southern story going on, you know, make it more interesting for kids, and it uh -huh. kind of introduces introduces them to different things. Yeah. The third book there is called Shh, which is one of my favorite books to tell. It's actually um, the kids actually participate with the story. It's like Jack and the Beanstalk, a different version of mm -hmm. that where they actually, um, we see different parts of the story leading up to seeing the actual giant, and everybody has to be quiet, you know, until the giant's sleeping throughout the story until the very end, mm -hmm. and then he's awake, and we gotta hurry, and we shut the book, you know, <laughs> and the kids love it. They wanna do it again and again, so. Oh, yeah. Um, but the Princess Pigatoria is a fun story to use with story time. Um, it actually has 127 words that begin with the letter P. Oh my goodness. It's kind of a tongue twister. It's yeah, I was going to say, I'm not sure story. I could pull that one off. <laughs> the kids like that one. I actually tell, before I tell them, I said, now count, see how many, how many P's you can read in the, or hear in the story. And of course they lose count, but it is a fun story, kind of a uh -huh. fantasy fairy tale story. Uh -huh. um, the little old lady who was not afraid of anything is very much audience participation. Great to do in fall or Halloween. Um, it incorporates, has the kids do the action. Um, the little old lady encounters a pair of pants on the street when she's walking <laughs> back to her house at, late uh -huh. at night. So the pants wiggle, the shirt shakes, the gloves clap, all the different things that she does. And the kids, of course, do that as well. So uh -huh. that's a great audience participation oh, yeah. story. Yeah, and the last one, the wide mouth frog, um, is a lot of fun. It's a pop-up story, and pop-up stories are always good to use with younger kids. Yeah. Um, it's kind of challenging when you're doing a large group because they all want to get up and touch it or, or pull something that opens or pops out, but they're a lot of fun. Yeah. It's, it's good to do. We always say at the end we'll share it with everyone. So, yeah. And I misspoke. The last one, the caterpillar and the polywog, um, that's actually a reversible puppet. You can actually, oh. it starts out as a little polywog, and then the, the story uh, covers the story, uh, the time of the polywog before he turns into a frog. So he turns mm -hmm. into a frog in the story, and then at the end of the story, I ask the kids, do you think our polywog can turn? No, no, no. So I have them close their eyes, count, and we reverse it and turn it inside out. Yeah. It's kind of a little bit of magic along with the stories. So. Oh, yeah, exciting. But that's, that's a they fun thing that. to do. Those are, that's a great, those are great resources to use. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that there's plenty more, too. Oh, there are plenty yeah. more. The library has several resources. Anyone that comes in wants help with anything, I'm more than happy to help them find the materials. Yeah, they need, so. so parents want to liven up that right. story time. Exactly. Sometimes I think, I don't know, when kids grow up being read to, but sometimes you get a parent who's like, 
Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. Right, where to know? start, how do I begin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of resources that we can help them do that. Yeah, so. or someone who's doing daycare or right. Right. a camp or whatever. Right, We and, and I also go out to different facilities to do stories and we, we encourage them. We have a wonderful library at the Lincoln Branch. We mm -hmm. have so many, a wonderful story time room, the hot air balloon theme. So you we do. encourage people to you come do. down for that, to see that as well. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're, we love the one at Lincoln. I think that's probably everybody's favorite. We have mm -hmm. some other great story time rooms, too. Mm -hmm. you know, we got Lakeview looks like a park, and right. North Branch looks like a beehive. Right. And Main Library now has been redone, our story time room, and mm -hmm. we have this cool, very colorful mural, and it says story time over the door. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Very nice. So we don't have many story times downtown, though, just mm -hmm. on special occasions because... Right. We just, people don't right. bring kids downtown, right. so. Right. But Lincoln Branch has mm -hmm. plenty, and you we guys do a great We have a lot of different agencies job. and general yeah. public that come in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know the kid, the different agencies love it when we travel and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, what, what else have you got for okay. us here? The second thing we've got um, on the next slide Whoop. is... Went too far. Oop. Some other back. resources there. you can use, which is a puppet theater. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do costumes. Um, I did bring a little friend with me today. This okay. is actually my mother goose puppet. Aww. And it's good to use if you're doing really younger kids, um, especially young kids that have not been to the library before. Uh -huh. When they come for a toddler time, they're not always sure what's going to take place. What, what exactly is this? So if you have a little character, a little hand puppet that you can use to greet them at the door, it kind of welcomes them in. I mean, it kind of softens the, where are we going, what are we doing thing. Yeah. So you have the little mother goose puppet, the kids love to put their hands in her, you know, and yeah. she, but <laughs> she welcomes everyone in and gets everybody seated and stuff. So this is a great thing to use for, for like a toddler time to uh -huh. get kids in that have never done a story time before. Um, some of the other things that I have up there, um, there's the, Puppet theater, which is great mm -hmm. for doing stories to bring them kind of to life. Actually, was on here and did a puppet show yeah. on the show. And people and can find that on YouTube yes. if they want to go back and revisit. Right, right. So the puppets are an excellent resource to use. Um, the hat the at the end of the puppet stage there, mm -hmm. the Dr. Seuss cat in the hat, when you're going to do Dr. Seuss costumes of any sort, even if you have an apron to do Mother Goose, any mm -hmm. kind of costume like the hat to use during um, mm -hmm. Green Eggs and Ham or any of the Dr. Seuss stories help enhance the stories as well. Oh, yeah. And at the end of the stage, um, on the left-hand side, there is a hand puppet, and I actually have that here with me. This is a called, uh, they call it a monkey glove or a glove puppet uh -huh. where you can actually use um, little for little like learning math mm -hmm. alphabet this one is actually on the vowels you have the a for apple the e for elephant the i for indian o for octopus and u for umbrella so you can do a little thing with the kids teaching them the vowels oh, nice. so there are several of these that you can use um, different little stories short little things again these are great for toddler times oh i bet to use for the younger younger kids um, they can actually help put them on or take them off however you want to utilize that but those are some other resources that you can use when Fun. you're doing a story time as long as, so, long, as long as i've been around the library i've never seen that really yeah oh my gosh yes you have to come from one of my taller times i will <laughs> to bring my granddaughter there you go that's right <laughs> okay okay um can people do you think people can make a puppet stage fairly easily yes as a matter of fact someone could actually take a cardboard box like a tv box or even a refrigerator box mm -hmm. you could cut the top part out of it um use a little put a little curtain like that along the top of it mm -hmm. um and make your own little puppet stage at home yeah. to act out stories yeah, you can probably pick up curtains at salvation army yeah. or somewhere you can use the back of your sofa yeah. You know, use that yeah. to come up and do some puppets with. Yeah, so, yeah. fun. And the next um, resource in front of that is one I use for toddler time, and that is actually the felt board okay. story. Um, it works well to enhance stories for younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, I've got it in here somewhere. This is actually one that I made. Um, felt on felt works very well. So this is actually a picture of a bunny that I oh. found. And then I glued pieces of felt on the back of it. So he as well, if people worry about 
they have a hard time sometimes finding the picture, the actual item that they want to use for mm -hmm. their felt board story. So you can actually just use a picture and glue the felt on the back of it, and then these are just Great actual idea. pieces of felt. And the concept of this one um, that it shows up there is that the kids are all looking for, the rabbit has lost his carrot, so they're trying to find the carrot. So actually, if I have a nice small group, which is great, they go up and take off the different pieces we think of as a circle, the star, you know. And it actually helps them learn colors and helps them learn shapes as well when you're doing this sort of, of um, felt board story. So mm -hmm. it's a fun thing to use. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And easy. And easy to use. You can get felt at Walmart or any Michaels or any of the stores. And the pictures, you can go online to coloring book section and find different characters. Yeah. Or, or mm -hmm. even cut up a coloring book you already exactly. have. Exactly. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Next resource, um, there is again is the Wide Mouth Frog, the pop-up book. Mm -hmm. Pop-up books are a lot of fun. Um, they're a good way to illustrate a story. Um, I actually have with me today the pop-up book, The Caterpillar oh, that's and the a Fruit. Big, it big is one. a big one. Um, this is actually the 40th anniversary. So this one is actually has a lot of big pop-ups that you can use for the story. And there again, kids love, it brings the story to life. It brings oh. it off the page for them. Yeah. Um, the, the wide mouth frog, again, is another pop-up story. And the paper story is actually a folding story that I do that doesn't have a book that goes with it. It's called The Rain Hat. Oh, and you take okay. the paper and fold it. It's on the concept of a little girl who wants to go outside and play, but it's raining. Mom says no got to go to your room. So she goes to her room, doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to color, doesn't want to play with her toys. She just wants to play with this plain piece of paper. So throughout the story, you take the paper and fold it. You make um, a rain hat with it, the first one. Mm -hmm. You fold it again. It's a fireman's hat because the neighbor's house is on fire and you want to oh. help put out the fire. Um, the third one is a pirate's hat. You fold the pirate hat, it becomes a boat. She sails on water. And then the last one that you do is you fold it. Um, the boat actually runs into different things in the water. It's during a flood. It's a good springtime story to use. Yeah. And you tear <laughs> off different parts of the boat, and it unfolds into a life jacket. Oh. So it's kind of a neat concept story that you can use. There's several paper stories, cutting or folding stories, that you can do that also enhances a story time as well. Do we have instructions for that? I mean, is, is there a there book of is. that kind there of actually, thing you can get at the library? If you go back in one of your slides on that right there and then the other one is the instructions that you can get off the internet for it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. For making a folding story. So. Yeah, so they can come to the library and right. look that up and print it off. And right. you'll help them find it if right. they can. Right, exactly. Yeah. Do you know, are there any other YouTube tutorials or anything about how to do these? Have there are. Looked? There are some on YouTube that you could do for <coughs> folding stories. Mm -hmm. Fun. And speaking of YouTube, there's also um, one other resource that you can use with the children is singing. Um, that's become one of my things down at Lincoln. Um, we have songs that we start off story time with and what we end story time with. But just simple little stories on the itsy bitsy spider or um, doing, you know, um, wheels on the bus, anything like that enhances oh, yeah. the story time as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I know. I know some of our other librarians for older children mm -hmm. have done the thing where they put on the put on a movie like Frozen and turn the sound right. off but have the right the words on it so mm -hmm. they can sing along right and have a movie sing along right. with yes. that and right. sing all the songs for it. That's a great which idea. Which is yeah, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of being a child and follow the bouncing the ball. ball and yes. <laughs> I wonder if you can still get any of those great old well, Disney. Well, you know, actually, Frozen does have a DVD out that has the words on it that you oh, can maybe that's sing what along with. That's probably might be what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, how cool. fun. Yeah. It would be nice to get the old mm -hmm. the old ones for us old people, get mm -hmm. old people sing along. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's okay. see here. Technical issues. We're that's done fine. with this one. Yes, and, and that we're one. done with that one. Okay. And this there's one, your tower, which that is my tower. That is actually one that I used. It's that a game like... that I've utilized for a lot of summer reading programs. Mm -hmm. And of course our theme this last year was Read to the Rhythm. 
So uh -huh. I put Read to the Rhythm and some musical um, chords on there for kids for the summer reading. And that's mm -hmm. something we do at the end of um, our get-togethers, um, not all the time, but every special occasion. Yeah. Um, it's a based on the Angry Bird game that's a video game. Oh yeah, I was looking at it. I was right. like, isn't that Angry Birds? Right, <laughs> it is Angry Birds. So I made this, I got the idea, and I can't even remember where I got the idea, but took some boxes and all the time the kids are saying, what's in those boxes? And I'm saying, air, I wrapped air. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's the three pigs and the two angry birds. So we set it on the floor, and the kids take turns trying to knock them down with the angry birds. They have oh, a lot of fun with them. I we actually it. discovered that one of the little angry birds, when you squeeze it, actually makes a sound. This oh, summer, so okay. Never knew that before. But, yeah. <laughs> but games are a fun way to wrap up a story time, something to do at the end, a little mm -hmm. physical activity to get them up and involved. So. Great do, you, do you ever find that the kids are really restless when they first get there and you need a trick to settle them down? Yep, we do. We do. That's where the singing comes in pretty handy. We do okay. a welcome song to welcome everybody in and get them kind of calmed down, settled down, and set down. So, yeah. Yeah. I had past experience with, with kids and I actually resorted to things like running in place and jumping jacks there trying to get the wiggles the, the, out. The energy <laughs> out. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they're combination of just their kids they're excited they're right. energetic and then right. there's also just you know mm -hmm. needing to settle down and get right. into being quiet right. burn it off a little bit right. so yeah well that looks like a lot of fun it is a lot of fun that's one of the games we do we do a um we also have a beanbag game that we do as well oh, okay and for the older kids we have um cups that they do i don't know if you remember the tv show in a minute where you had to do a game in a minute, you had to do oh. so many things in a minute, and we have the different colored cups with one odd colored cup, and they have to try to get that down to the, they have a minute to get it down to the bottom, you know, take all the cups up and get it onto the bottom. Get the, so get the it's bottom a, cup. It's kind of for older mm -hmm. kids, but it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know I saw the boxes come in that the library mm -hmm. has just acquired Wordwinder. Yes, that's an exciting game. Ooh, yeah. yes. Looking forward to that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm not even, I didn't get to see the demonstration, so I don't know how oh, it works. I just it works know really well. it arrived, and we can look forward to programs this winter, oh, yes, I think. Oh, for sure. With it. For sure. So how, how does that work? I know it's big. It it's goes big, on the floor. <laughs> right. The one that I saw for the demonstration um, was a word, a cr like a cross word, kind of like Scrabble, where you mm -hmm. try to connect letters. You have a word that you create, and then you try to build off of that. And they had teams that you're on if you have a larger group with different colored discs that you use to put on the, the letters. Yeah, because I said, there. what are the green and pink plates right. for? And they looked at me and they said, those are the place markers. Right, they are. They're the place markers. So your goal is to get from one side of the board to the other side or from the bottom to the top. So you're trying to play off of words that other people put down. You try to block them, other teams, from doing words. So I it's heard a lot some of, of the children's librarians got a tad aggressive. Yes, they the, did. When they, they did. played this mm -hmm. game and were pretty we determined did. to win. That's right. <laughs> we did. We did. And then when you flip it over, um, it was numbers. Oh, okay. So you can do math problems, simple math. You can do um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, the only thing that they don't allow you to do is to use a numer the number zero. Okay. So you can use anything else in that way. So, that but, yeah. so what age group are these games for? They kind of are more for the primary, I would say, for you could do anything from second grade up with the basic concepts. They have to be able to spell some simple right. words they and had, do some simple math. The one that we had were simple words. Um, you can get them that have more complicated words for older kids, but the simpler words, yeah. The math would be great to use for younger kids up through high school if you wanted to. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So we can look forward to seeing some of that at Lincoln, oh, yes, too. yes, you sure can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. Right. Okay, and I think you have maybe one more picture for us I here. do. Those are some of the crafts. Some of those you're familiar with because I put some of them on, my, on the web page for the kids to do right. for the library. And that's the other thing is people should remember that on our PeoriaPublicLibrary.org web page we have that youth section which right. you go under, I think it's under kids at the how library. to use the library right. and then there's the kids and there's all sorts of crafts games right. and a lot of people have found that because mm -hmm. we look at how many people are looking at the page. A lot of people are using all the time, but mm -hmm. great resource for mm -hmm. schools, for parents, grandparents, right. daycares. Right. It's all right there. So, right. and as you're saying, some of these crafts you already some have. Some of out the crafts there. I had on there, um, the Easter Bunny, which is a 
just a paper plate with a circle cut out of it, whiskers and ears attached, and you've got an Easter bunny for Easter. Um, rainy days, you've got the fish there that you can mm -hmm. do with a paper plate colored tissue paper. Um, one of them that I brought along with me is the, uh, the little tissue, colored tissue that you can do in a Ziploc bag with a little uh -huh. um, Chanel. Um, oh, cute. Yeah. So they leave it in the bag like that? They leave it in the bag That's like that and then just tie it pretty. up together and twist it and twist it. And then you've got your little instant butterfly that you can do with younger kids. Oh, cute. Um, the one in the front is one we did this year for um, back to school, a little mouse bookmark. Oh, fun. Uh -huh. And then, of course, there's the, for St. Patrick's Day, um, the reading rainbow, the rainbow there with the little cotton balls on the end oh, of it so yeah, the one over in the corner I've done with um, a lot of the um, agencies that have come into me for training on daycare right. um, for crafts and it's just the simple little um, flower that you can make I actually brought one here with me um, you just take a little like a little dum-dum sucker uh -huh. and you've got you can cut them out you can find the templates on the internet um, use colored paper to do different colored flowers and then just the kids, real simple to put them together, smaller to larger, that they can make a little craft. They make a little flower for springtime. Oh, cute. Simple little treat that they can take with them, craft treat. So just simple little things that yeah, you can do. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in the fall of the year, and it occurs to me that that, that bunny, mm -hmm. you could almost do the same thing with the pumpkins. pumpkins. You could with an orange plate, cut mm -hmm. it out, a little orange green plate. top on it, a little hat. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. you sure could. And uh, what other sorts of things do you have for fall? These are all spring. We well, they do are. fall. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of things with scarecrows, and we do oh, a lot okay. of things with... I'm actually going to try to do this year a little science project with a small little pumpkin to put some stuff in it to make it kind of fizz over like a volcano. So oh, a little fun. interactive stuff to do. A lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Um, how often do you offer story time at Lincoln Branch? We offer it every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, and we always do um, a craft along with our story time. So it's every Thursday from 10 to 10.30. Okay. And or what every age Tuesday, group is I'm that sorry. for? Tuesday. That's for preschools, um, okay. three to six-year-olds. Okay. So, yeah. And do our parents welcome to oh, stay yes, with the they kids? they sure are. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember when my kids were growing up, you had to leave them, and right. I never understood why that didn't work right. very well. Because yeah. you have one adult with too many toddlers. <laughs> right, exactly. I encourage the parents. Of course, my room is large that yes. I have anyway, so I have space for parents to sit. And I encourage mm -hmm. them because they're learning as well. Something that I do, they can go home to repeat or do with the kids as do well. Do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah. And... Um, what other things do you think story time does for children when they come to story time beyond just hearing a story and being entertained? What else does it do right. for them? One thing that I do um, at Lincoln is before we actually begin our, our story time, I always have them go out into the picture book area mm -hmm. and they all get a book to look at. Um, and encourage, I want to encourage people to get a library card, um, to look at the books, take the books home with you and read the stories, you know. So story time and does a lot of things and not just entertains the children, but it kind of gives them the idea of, okay, this is kind of cool. I could take, get a card, take some books home and do this with my kids at home too. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think it helps get them ready for school if they oh, haven't I been do. to school yet? I do. I do. Um, the concepts that we teach, the alphabet, the counting, the different themes that we do, yeah. Even just being ready. with a group of children. Exactly. It helps develop have... socialization skills. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So as they graduate from that little story time, what other sort of things are offered at Lincoln Branch as you, as you grow right. out of that age group and into the right. next? Sherry does a front and center program where she does programs for primary age up through the kind of middle school age. Mm -hmm. And she does a lot of stories, crafts. Um, she does a lot of things around the time of year, things that are happening. Seasonal. Seasonal yeah. things that are going on. And um, she, there's, there's that for the younger kids. And we just hired a new uh, young adult librarian that is going to begin in October. And she will be doing, she's coming with a lot of great ideas to do for young adults to get those teens into the library and doing programs as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. The library is a great place for teens. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to offer them. Sometimes they don't want to come right. because it's not cool. But right. 
there's a lot of stuff that's there for them to yeah, do. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And, and mm -hmm. I think when you and I were probably teens, we were going to the library because it was mm -hmm. the only way to do your homework. Right, exactly. But now there's, there's um, you know, you can stay home and access our databases. You don't have to come to the library right. to do that kind of research. But, right. Yeah. But it's good to get the teens in the library. It helps develop yeah. that young adult. Um, young kids when they come in are always excited to read the middle grades are always excited to read like you said the teen is kind of the difficult area but once you get yeah. them in and grab them and connect with them then they develop into adult readers and, exactly. and that's a wonderful exactly. thing. I think a lot of people who read as small children get back to it even mm -hmm. if they skip a little bit in there but mm -hmm. I think kids get overwhelmed when they're that age because mm -hmm. they have so many commitments to so many things right. there's not time to read for pleasure right. And it's too bad because it really is relaxing. I mean, that's mm -hmm. studies that show that. Mm -hmm. It's a great stress reliever because right. those are stressful years. They are stressful years. Yeah, and so. it's, it's easy, easy to get on the computer and escape, but getting in a book and just yeah. the smell of a book. It's just, <laughs> I love the it smell does, of a book. <laughs> it does different things in your brain right. than getting on right. the computer and reading little bits of stuff. Right. Well, Mary, thank you so much for coming well, and sharing all of this. Yeah. And I hope people got a lot of great ideas on how to make that story time more Me exciting. Too. Me too. Yeah. Thank you. We um, have our big event coming up on October 12th called What's Your Story? You'll want to go to the website and make sure you get your ticket. It's a great way to support the library. Um, while we are tax supported, we don't have money for programming for things like what Mary does. Um, and the Friends of the Library purchase much of that for all of our children's librarians. And, our summer reading party. So if you, you can come to this great party and meet Melanie Benjamin, who's the author of um, The Aviator's Wife, and you can eat, drink, be merry, do all kinds of fun stuff. We'll see you next week on Information, Please. <laughs>